Well. Wait, is it already? Oh, people are there. People are there. Really? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Again, there's a lot of people in the old. You can you type? Tell them. <laughs> Are we good? Not yet. It Not says yet. this video has been removed by the upload. Maybe wow. I have the wrong link. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check. There's 200 people in the old link and 15 in the It's very quiet. Uh, no, it actually should work. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. Yes. I see it. I see it. Yeah, yeah. Finally. Okay. Can, so... can people hear us? Um, yeah, I assume so. Good. It looks like we okay. are on. Uh, okay, we have some of the people from uh, yesterday. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining again. Yeah. Um, we're going to wait a bit longer just because uh, we have that old link, just to make sure that the people from the old link get a chance to jump into the new one. Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, should I like make a comment or something? Cause I, I don't know. Um, or maybe I should replace the thumbnail with like a big sign, like, hey, no, check no. out another <laughs> link. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, in from the other link, that's cool. Okay. Uh, how much longer do we wait? Uh, maybe two more minutes? That's oh. a good idea. Yeah, but I mean, you, you know, I like. Oh, okay. Actually, if you, how long would it take you to replace that thumbnail? <laughs> I, let me try. Well, you know, let's do oh, it this I, I posted in Discord already in like uh, updated links, uh -huh. but maybe I can share it in other places. Yeah, yeah. So uh, why don't you start, you know, like introduction and what this panel is going to be about? And I can, uh, you know, go and take care of that thing mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start just yes, with the introduction. Um, so for all of you that didn't have a chance to come to our portfolio review last night or who haven't heard from us, my name is Farid Sandoval. I'm a senior concept artist at Technicolor Art Department. And uh, this is Maxim Koshepnikov. Uh, we met at Technicolor Art Department. We worked together for a while. We uh, talked about art in every lunch that we had. And uh, we were really good friends and we continued to explore, you know, uh, the best ways to do art the, the, the art is, is difficult within itself and then when it has to be a professional tool it makes it that much harder so we we always talked about technique um, ways to uh, teach ways to communicate all of these information that um, it, it can be overwhelming and so we hope that with this presentation uh, we can uh, help you to make a better portfolio that is uh, that is true to yourself more than anything because it's uh, nowadays it's very easy to to get overwhelmed. So uh, we want to make sure you can create something that allows you to ultimately be happy. And uh, do you have anything else for the introduction that you want to say? Mike? No, I yeah, I definitely agree because um, uh, it's honestly it's been. I don't want to say a problem, but that was a thing for me when I was studying and it's still a thing, you know, it's interesting because you keep thinking about yourself as your like, I mean, as an, your art being an extension of yourself. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, you're constantly thinking about like how like new pieces that you can make for your, you know, portfolio and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it could be just like, you know, one image or it could be something bigger, but it's still, you know, you, you, you're always thinking about it. And I, and I totally agree that those um, social medias and all that stuff affects a lot on how we see the world and how we, uh, you know, adjust to, you know, uh, all that environment. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to you know, to talk about it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So we're going to get started. Um, this is kind of what we're going to go through. We're going to do a, a short panel 
And we noticed there are so many questions about portfolios just from our panel last night that we want to engage today with a couple more questions. Just so you know, we have someone curating, reading through a lot of the questions and kind of gathering the ones that get asked the most. So even if we don't answer your specific question, please know that someone is going through them and trying to uh, grab the ones that will answer the most of you. So that's going to be that. And then we have the remaining portfolios from yesterday. We have a list now. And so these are the ones that we're going to go through today. Again, we received hundreds of portfolios between Max and I. And uh, we hope that through time we can uh, talk to you and, and give you the attention that you need. We've been thinking about doing these portfolio review reviews maybe on a monthly basis. We're you know, trying to come up with a, a, a way to, to help you out. Um, for today, for the time that, that we have, uh, this, this is the list. And, uh, and I hope uh, this works for you all. Uh, OK. Do you want to do this, this slide, Max? Because uh, mm -hmm. I'm passionate about it. Yeah. Well, interesting. I think, yeah, well, uh, help me. Uh, can, can, right. you, well, can you start? We, we, we started by saying uh, it's so easy to get deviated from what one wants to do, like what makes you happy, what mm -hmm. inspires you, because there's so much around. Like you look at Instagram, you look at ArtStation, and it, it starts to become overwhelming. Like, where do I go? And then, you, you know, someone like us tells you like, oh, your portfolio should look like this. But then you look at the uh, at my portfolio online, and you may like you may be like, oh, that's not what you said, you know. And and uh, there's a big difference between personal artwork and professional artwork. And then you don't know what people are posting, you don't know how long it's taking them, and you don't know so many things. So it can become very overwhelming. Um, so the main message from this panel that I want you to take with you is the idea of focus. So. Uh, throughout the portfolio review yesterday, we saw a lot of like, I wonder where I should go. I'm interested in three different industries. Uh, I'm interested in animation, interested in um, live action, film. And so basically what that means is that you're going to have to create like five portfolios, right? Because every industry needs a different portfolio and even more, uh, every project in the industry may need a different portfolio. So, so what, what I hope you, you're able to do uh, with uh, time and with experience is to narrow down what you would like to do. Uh, try to find people who are already doing what you want to do. So like if you want to do feature film, then uh, find someone who's doing already feature film and ask like, what does my portfolio have to look like? And that may be very different from what someone who's uh, doing a portfolio for live action is doing. And so try to focus the mo as much as possible. Just find out what you love and find out what other people are doing professionally and try to match a portfolio. Uh, the, 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 more, the most focused portfolios are the easiest for us to read. And, and I, that's going to help you a lot. Yeah. You want to add anything? Max? Yeah. Well, basically my approach to, well, it's not even an approach. It's just, I, cause like I was thinking about it for a pretty long time and I found that there are two ways you can, you know, you can approach it. Uh, number one, you can uh, basically try to think about the studio or, you know, the, the type of work you want to do in like in the future. Like, just as you said, like, if you want to work in movie industry, if you want to work in VFX, you have to kind of like visualize what is that you want to do. And then you adjust and you, uh, you know, and you try to make a portfolio that matches it and you try to uh, get a right skill set so you will be able to do that work. That one thing. And uh, the second approach is that you just do what you like to do and then naturally you try to monetize your uh, skills. Basically, if you like to work with pencil and you really enjoy it and you like just pencil drawings, there are plenty of ways you can apply it. You can 
same you can work in the film industry we know those examples for example and make pretty good money because if you are good with pencils you you have you know uh benefits that we don't have because we don't have that skills you know you mm -hmm. can also do book illustrations you can there are so much stuff you can do so the the problem i mean that there's definitely like good sides the the downsides of first approach i would say is that um you have to adjust basically because like uh some people i mean we we we, we saw that i think le last time in uh in, in the last light box uh, 2019 when people will will come to us with portfolio and it's definitely like illustrative portfolio and they will say like oh we want to work in a movie industry and we will be like why like it doesn't look like your like we see your portfolio and it doesn't look like a movie portfolio right it doesn't look like you will enjoy it so the downside is that if for some reason you decided that you want to be in film but then naturally you have tendency to work like in a different i don't know like in a different how should i say a style i guess right mm -hmm. then uh you will suffer because you will have to kind of like form yourself into some in into a new person in a way and yeah. uh, for some people it, it is it is easy to do for others it might be hard um and the the problem with the second approach is that yeah you will do what you like to do but there is always a chance that uh it will be problematic to find a way to make money for a living from that even though i believe that you can <laughs> like nowadays with internet and all that stuff you can do anything like uh I don't know you can play games and you can stream it and you can make money out of that right so uh, like it's it's crazy like I, I can't imagine like 20 years ago i mean i'm not that old right but i'm just thinking about it right <laughs> if you will tell someone 20 years ago that you can just play games and have fun and be happy and you know stream it and make money out of it it's gonna be crazy right but now you can do that it, 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 you can build a career out of that so uh i i believe there is definitely a possibility just to stay um true to your kind of like nature to believe mm -hmm. in yourself and be able to eventually make money out of that yeah uh, but it's I would hard say, like to question why you want to go into film, why you want to go into animation, if maybe what you'd like to do is uh, just illustration or you want to do uh, editorial. Yeah. Uh, you, the fact that we work in film doesn't mean that uh, our work is, um, is the most fulfilling, you know? Um, so I would, say, I, I would say find the people who are doing what you want to do and make sure that when you get a description of their of their day-to-day -day jobs, it is what you want to do. Uh, and I think that goes back to focusing, like find out where you will fit. And then once you find that out, then the portfolio, uh, create the creating your portfolio is going to be much easier because you'll know exactly what you need to put in there to enter, as yeah. opposed to this broad approach that we usually see with people starting out. Yeah. Gonna go yeah. Next slide. This is basically what we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you, you know, just to continue on that, narrowing down uh, is a, you know, pretty tough task because as an artist, you always want to be creative and you want to explore more possibilities. And there is a conflict in that, right? Because you want to explore more and you have to narrow it down so you can focus on something. And again, uh, like uh, if you ask me i can see two ways of approaching it. you can naturally just focus on something because i know people who literally just do the same thing over and over uh like for example they like characters and just and they just do same type of characters over and over and i'm not saying it's bad or good i'm just saying that for me for example that's unnatural because like i can do one character but if you will ask me to make uh 
like 20 characters in the same universe, I'll be like, oh, that's going to be, you know, I will push myself into doing that. If, if that's going to be my personal project, I will never do that because I know that after first two or three characters, I will be, you know, bored and I will try to push it and make something new or try to implement new technique or something like that. And eventually it's going to create a, a completely different, you know, result. So, uh, again, I think if you approach it from your personal perspective, like if you feel that you like to explore, explore, and then you will have a much broader ski, uh, skill set, right? And it will help you because you will be able to do different tasks and you will find clients that will, you know, uh, enjoy it and they will pay for it and in if on the other hand you you like to focus on something and just do one thing and be the best in that do that i mean there's no i i think it's the 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 important thing is to understand that you have those options and to understand what's what's working for you that's i think the the most important thing and if you understand that, then you don't really have any uh, questions because then you just like ask yourself in a way, not asking us, but yourself in terms of who am I like? Do I like to explore? Yeah, I like. OK, so I guess I should just do that and use it as my advantage instead of trying to mimic or copy someone else in a way. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah, it definitely comes down to your passion. Yeah. And, and, uh... And I, again, I'm going to keep repeating this word and being focused on what you want to do. Uh, and I know it's hard. Like sometimes it's even worth taking a break from social media and stuff to, to kind of like explore exactly what, you, what that is that you love. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I... after that, then you, can, then you can decide like, well, I know as Max was saying, like I love this particular thing. And then you're going to be hired for doing that. And for a lot of artists, that's the way to go, you know, like they do this style mainly character mainly in one palette even and uh, you know you're not be, gonna be hired by everyone but you'll be hired by the, per the people who are sens sensible sensitive have the sensitivity for your type of work yeah. uh, or you can be uh, more broad and maybe you have uh, a wider range of opportunities but you know you'll have to adapt more often and I think uh, that's the case, uh, at, at least with me at Technicolor, for example. Uh, I am very curious. I actually don't know one particular uh, style that I love the most. Uh, but I know that I like um, film and I know I like pre-production work. Mm -hmm. So that's how I created my first portfolio. Yeah. Uh, be besides that, um, I actually didn't, you know, I, I didn't know if I could focus or not at the beginning. Yeah. So I think uh, honestly for us, like uh, I would compare it to explorers, right? So we like to explore and every new task is almost like a new unexplored island or something like that. So we, you just get thrown to that island and you have no idea what what is in there. If if anyone was there before and you just have to solve it and uh, with time you slowly develop you know approaches to how to like different types of approaches to to different tasks and you recognize them and you it's almost like solving a puzzle but mm -hmm. i at the same time i understand that that's not working for everyone there are a lot of people who just like to you know focus on one thing and they just do this one particular kind of task and they do that much better than us and because I mean, it's logical because like if 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 you are working on something for years, right, you're definitely going to be much better than us who do different, you know, stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I wonder. OK, so I wanted to talk about something very important, which is the difference between illustration and concept art, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of confusion and a lot yeah. of people, as we were saying, like, want to go into illustration but they think that the only way to do it is through concept art and then mm -hmm. the other way around so maybe you tell people uh, what you think illustration is and by the way all of this is 
philosophy. Okay, uh, we, everything we say is based on our experience, but yeah. we know that you know we're trying to frame something that is ultimately broad and yeah. almost uh, spiritual, right? Uh, yeah. Philosophical. So yeah. this is just our perspective, and and uh, just take well, it, uh, I I would say that mm, there is n it's the line is very blurry between concept art and illustration in I, like in a like in modern time i would say that basically if if you are hired as a concept artist you are hired to solve the problem and uh sometimes it's like broader problem and you will be given a task to for example a design a keyframe or a beauty shot for some kind of story and then it becomes almost like an illustration because you have to create this beautiful shot that represent the story behind it and it could be a book illustration because the, the task essentially is the same but more often you get tasks like uh, can you design this prop or can you design this building or uh, can you design this particular story moment in you know from from the script or something like that and in in these situations you have to focus more on that particular task and solve it within the given you know parameters whereas like in illustrations it's a bit broader and it's more about how you feel about you know the like you you're given a task but the task usually as far as i can you know understand it it's more about like hey we have this idea behind this story and now we need an illustration that can represent that idea so mm -hmm. it's a it's it's a bit different and also um um again it's it's just personal you know kind of thinking behind it but i think that illustration has more um kind of like there there are more aspects to illustration for example the brushwork right and how it feels like if it's uh, if you print it right whereas like for concept art it's most of the time just strictly uh solving a particular problem within the bigger pipeline so i would say that concept is not the the finished piece is just a tool to make something bigger whereas an illustration is the final product that you are selling so that's definitely that's i think the that's a very good sentence a very good uh, thing to keep away is like illustration you basically own the entire pipeline mm -hmm. right whereas uh, in concept art it's like yeah just a little piece a little yeah. extra for this massive pipeline and yeah. then something that's very interesting is that whatever you create as a concept artist has to be understood by this massive pipeline yeah so um okay so based on that max i'd like to maybe start talking about the different types of uh, concept art and yeah uh i touched on this on a previous panel if you want to go really in depth uh mm -hmm. i talked with the technical or art department mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna go through it um on, on a more broad way mm -hmm. uh, understand so for example this is this is speech uh type of work and if you can tell it's mainly about uh, the mood uh the broad brush strokes large uh silhouettes um if i was to give these things to a modeler they'll probably be like what the hell are you doing you know, if i was to send this to the pipeline a lot of these things couldn't be built or if they were built they would there would have to be a lot of interpretation mm -hmm. um so this is mainly to sell a movie Right. Mm -hmm. So this is mainly uh, when we want to uh, have a piece as proof of concept that a film could work, uh, a story moment uh, from a script that we are wondering if it would be successful or not. So this is the kind of stuff that is used to sell a movie f to a large studio. If, if someone has an idea, you create this package and it yeah. has a script, it may have storyboards and then this, uh, this pitch work is used to move the project forward yeah. in a variety of directions. Yeah. Um, and I would say that this type of work is the closest to illustration because mm -hmm. you these have things so much won't freedom. be built. Yeah. Yes, you have the freedom 
you may be working with an IP that already exists. So that means that you receive something, you, you design less and you focus more on the surroundings of that IP. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would say if you enjoy illustration, you're like in between uh, maybe pitches for you. Maybe, maybe this is where you don't, if you don't love to design the, the buttons Every or single, the, yeah. yeah, the props, like things like that, maybe, maybe pitches for you. Mm -hmm. um, oh, um, yeah. Do you have anything to add, Max, to, to pitch? Yeah. I think the, the simplest, you know, uh, way to imagine and to understand the, the pitch work is that imagine that there is a director, a, a guy who has an idea in mind and he might be an artist as well, but he might not have, you know, skills the same that you have or she doesn't matter. And that director want to like he, he or she has a story in mind, but they doesn't know how it, how it may look like. Right. So they come to you and they ask like, Hey, we have this awesome story. Can you make an awesome image? So we get excited. And of course they also eventually want to make money to, to make the movie. So they need to pitch that to studios and stuff like that. So they might use your work later on for their pitch to the studio to make money and to eventually to make movie. But I think what's important here is that you are trying to visualize their story and to make it for the first time, almost, almost for the first time to make it real, because before that it's, it exists only in mind or in, on the paper, right. As a text. So what you're doing here, you, you are just doing your best to make it, you know, to make it work. Uh, and of course you cannot solve everything within this first, uh, step. So you have to find a way how to cheat it in a way to, uh, I don't know, like if using like silhouettes and using brush works and stuff like that, just to hide some design problems that are not solved, but kind of like, uh, you know, give you the broad, the broad yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah. To, um, to represent a broader idea. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's my understanding of the pitch work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say that, that for video games are for, and for film, this push, this can be a freelance position where they bring you in for a couple of weeks or months yeah. just to initiate the conversation. So even mm -hmm. in video games, you know, they may bring a very high profile artist yeah. to develop like 10 to 20 images that are pitch. And then those images, if, if they're approved, then they, they can guide the tone of the remaining yeah. of, the, of the image, you know, yeah. from there, uh, a lot of things can start happening and, and other yeah. artists can come in to design yeah. the elements and things like that. Yeah. All right. Reproduction, reproduction. Oh, huh. that's, uh, it's a heavy one. <laughs> so, uh, just so you guys know, this is the work from my art director land. Uh, he was in that talk, uh, from a few days ago, uh, land Lagrange and, uh, He's not a very public person, but he's incredible. You've probably seen a lot of his creatures and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I think the pre-production is the work that I do the most at Technicolor. Uh, this is uh, also the work that um, is the most uh, mind consuming for me because this is where you actually need to design. And, and again, each person has their own tool to design the content of a movie. And, uh, and for example, in the case of my art director, he comes from a uh, modeling background. So he's the fastest at ZBrush. And so he's producing these things within a day or two, uh, you know, like he's fast at this. And then when uh, we always have this conversation where I go and I do painting, uh, digital painting, and he's always like, man, it would take me, you know, weeks to do what you're mm -hmm. doing in painting. And it would take me weeks to do what he's doing in a, uh, in a, uh, modeling and, and the conversation with Max, it was always like, Max is a rendering machine because you know, like what I could do, like, oh, like I'm designing here, like Max was already rendering to photo real. So, you know, like each, uh, each one of us has the different skills, but in the end, we're all trying to solve problems because whatever we create in pre-production goes into the sea of a pipeline that it is like hundreds of people working on these things to actually build it for the movie or for the video game. Mm -hmm. Um, these are some examples and uh, just to give you a range of the, the finishes, right? Like 
we have something very finished uh, in a 3D sculpt that may be beneficial for that project. You have things that are more photo bashy, you know, because a lot of the times we have uh, work that is like hours, like, mm -hmm. you know, we have from half of the day till the end to come up with the design. Uh, sometimes it's one day. So when you see the use of photos online, it's not necessarily because we want to use photos, it's because it, you know, like it has to be done fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to show you like a, a little range, you know, from painting to photo bashy to sculpture. Yeah. Um, and I, again, well, what I want to add here is that uh, basically if you want to do that, that type of work, you have to have this broad, you know, set of skills, uh, just as Farid said, like he might be not the fastest in ZBrush, but he still know how to use it. And if if there is a need, he can do that. I mean, at, on, on some level and and to use it, because sometimes you know, you have a task that you just, there is no other way unless you use some kind of 3D program. And another time, like in this uh, uh, monkey on the right side, you just photo bash it and you use your Photoshop technique. Uh, so f again, like you got to, like if you want to work in this industry, you got to understand what kind of skill set you need and if you don't have something you can quickly you know uh adjust to that definitely yeah. definitely um so yeah pre-production is uh, more about design little details mm -hmm. uh, exploring uh even turnaround sometimes what yeah. else max do we do in pre-production uh, well it's a lot of stuff it's sometimes yeah. it's even just like a regular line drawing right because you line need drawing. to yeah it's it could be anything it could be uh like a lot of times it's just like working on top of the existed stuff so you just get the you know the design that has some problems and you have to solve it on top of that so it's it's basically being a small part of the bigger pipeline where you have to uh solve day-to-day -day problems mm -hmm. yeah all right post-production yeah that's even more interesting. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I, do you want to go for it? Yeah, I think the you know the the dif the the difference between uh, pre-production and post-production is very simple. Like pre-production, you you make an initial concept that will be built, and in post-production, something is already built, but there is still some kind of problem or there is a new idea, and you have to design on top of that. So even though this, like, I will talk about my uh, piece on top left corner, that dragon, even though it's personal project, but I included it here because uh, when I was doing that, I basically used the regular pipeline where I designed it first on, you know, using pencil, uh, like super quick designs. Then I made a 3D model and then I work on top of 3D model to make it more photorealistic and my 3d model was like super basic i think you can see find it somewhere like on my station or something like that but the idea is that it was the same pipeline as was used on the uh i think that 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 was the concept for uh godzilla right on 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 the right side where someone did a design first and then some other person made much you know much better uh 3D model, model out of yeah. that, you know, the uh, initial concept. And then I guess you had to design something because that's, yeah, it, that's com it comes back to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, I, I think you can tell more about what you did with this piece, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically that was the case. Like it was like more than 10 people designing this creature. Uh, I was one of them. Then it, it leaves, basically it leaves our hands. And then months later, you receive it back and it's a 3D model, you know? And then a lot of the things that you've done before are no longer in there. Uh, you know, like someone else has taken over the design. So many things happen in that process, but it usually comes back because the director uh, is either not happy with one thing or, you know, things that people thought were solved or not. So in this case, they realized that the face, you know, still had things to be solved with. And that was my job, you know, to describe everything that was happening at a very very uh, 
you know, if there was a very close encounter with him, we had tons of options for the eyes. And so post-production is very much about that. It's about like that final stage of um, fixing, mm -hmm. uh, exploring the extra mini details. And I don't know if you can notice a pattern here, like a pitch is like broad, very broad. Then uh, yeah. reproduction, you know, you start narrowing down and then post-production is like small details. And uh, this is why we put up these pieces together because this is where we're exploring also superpowers and uh, wrinkles. Yeah. And it's funny, Max, a lot you mentioned of, that- A lot of wrinkles. <laughs> a lot of wrinkles. Max, it's funny that you mentioned that even though it was a, this was a personal project, I also remember that it almost felt like post-production because I, I know you took a break from it for a while. Yeah. And then it's almost like it came back to you uh, uh, and then you have to finish the final yeah. detail. Even yeah. in that sense, I feel it's very much, yeah. uh, you use the whole pipeline from the mm -hmm. track. Yeah, because it's like, again, from my personal experience, it takes time to adjust basically because within one person, it's hard to basically, for example, in the morning to do a sketches on a kind of like pitch word, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then move to 3D world and then move to post-production trying to figure out every single detail. I mean, it's it's possible, but it's hard. And like, I would personally approach it in a way that I will spend a day or a couple days on doing some concepts and then I will take a break and then I will model it. Because then when I have to model it, I'm almost looking at my own concepts like it was given to me from someone else. Mm -hmm. And I'm just doing a job of modeling. Because if I do not switch that mindset, I will still continue to design that concept, even though I'm doing 3D model. And that's where a lot of times your, uh, the time you spend on a project get, you know, increased because you just not switching in a proper, you know, time. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You, you don't switch, uh, the pipeline state, right? Yeah. Like you, you, you stay in, um, broad stroke, broad stroke, broad uh -huh. stroke, and then things are not getting sold. Yeah. Uh, or you stay in pre-production for your piece or you stay, or some people, you know, they, they tend to go from broad stroke to like to small wrinkles. Post production, yeah. yeah, to wrinkles. And then the middle wasn't sold. So yeah. uh, if you keep this in mind, I think it's going to help you to create pieces yeah. easier and more yeah. efficiently. Yeah. Um, you put this page together, Max, and I, I like the fact that it shows, it's almost like the pipeline, right? Yeah. Uh, so to the very right, you have what you would consider pitch. Like, I don't think someone could actually model uh, the creature all the way, you know, like it, it shows a moment, it shows a personality of the creature. Uh, but ultimately, if I was to send this to the pipeline, we would come back, they would come back with tons of questions about like, hey, how do we build yeah, this? What like, is the anatomy of this dude, right? Exactly. And stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, then the middle image uh, starts to describe that in a pre-production, it's, it's an idea, right? So we did, you know, multiple uh, iterations and, uh, and actually this model, came to us from uh, another artist uh, and we had to like rework it. And for that person, it had already come from a couple other artists. Yeah. So even between studios and between artists, we are like jamming our work on top of each other's. Um, so especially in pre-production that is happening a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this was like an idea that we had and, and it was approved or whatever. And then months later, the last image arrives and then what happens it's a completely different concept but you, we still need to work on it yeah. and and narrow down on mm -hmm. the decisions yeah mm -hmm. what i like about this slide though is that you explain the way it should work like from right side to the left side but a lot of times i think in the mind it works from left to right which is a wrong approach you know what i mean like cuz mm -hmm. like when we when we think about like when we think about our future project, we start to focus on small details like wrinkles and all that stuff, and we lose the bigger image. So uh, even though on the slides from left to right, uh, it, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's other way around basically. So you have to think from the big image first from right side to the small wrinkles on the left side. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's right. Um, and I think it's important to to know that it, if you want to enter film, 
uh, as a pre-production artist or, or I think just in film, you should be able to understand where you're standing when you are hired or when you want to get hired. Most of the time we do the three uh, stages. All the artists do the three stages, depends on the project. Some project comes in already at the last stage. Some projects come in and we have to do everything. So it, the reason why we're presenting this to you is mainly so that when you create a portfolio piece, you just have a notion of what, what you're doing. Like, are you solving story uh, mood? Are you doing pitch? Or are you solving problems, design problems, uh, structural problems? Or are you focusing on the wrinkles? Just, it's, it's, it's just for you to think about it. Uh, mm -hmm. when you create your, your own brief. Yeah. Super important. <laughs> well, I think you can cover it. <laughs> <laughs> well, th that's the reason why we're doing this talk <laughs> is because, again, we are aware of the amount of noise and that noise includes us, right? Like we're telling you more things to do. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is all, uh, whatever you do should be for ultimately for your happiness. Uh, you, you should be creatively fulfilled. Um, and, and then the income part will come, uh, if you're true to yourself, um, don't, you don't have to spend 24 hours a day in front of the computer, yeah. uh, go out, uh, experience things because ultimately these experiences will fuel your work. Yeah. And uh, I have to remind this to myself. Uh, I know it's a conversation at the studio where we forget to take breaks, you know, and, and I know it's the reality of art, Yeah. but sometimes less is more. Yeah. Uh, do you want to add to this, Max? Yeah, I mean, there was a uh, crude experiment back in, I think, uh, I don't remember when, but in my mind, it's somewhere like at 80s. And um, there was a monkey and if the monkey, you know, press the button, then it gets some kind of, I don't know, piece of apple or something like that. And it gets <laughs> happy because, you know, like, oh, here is an apple. So it presses the button again, get the apple, it's happy. Then they have another monkey doing the same and getting apple. So the first monkey is like, well, it's fine, you know, like it's good. So I can press two and get the apple. And then they got a third monkey and that third monkey pressing the same button and it gets something i don't know sweet like candy or something like that and all other monkey knows that candy is you know like much tastier than apple and so mm -hmm. the first monkey starts to press a button and get apple again and now it's unhappy it's like oh shit like what what like i'm like why why me you know that, that kind of stuff so i'm i'm using this to just as an example of what's happening all the time on like when you go to social media on Instagram and stuff like that, because you you are seeing other people work and you think like, oh, wow, you know, like I'm and you get disappointed, basically. I, I, I could it's I think it's natural because you think that uh, someone is doing something, I don't know, bigger or cooler or something like that, whereas the I think the the reality is is not what other people doing, but what is important for you. And if you can recognize that, then you can be more, you know, be happier in a way. You know, like mm -hmm. if you and and I think it's 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 important to know that, and it's important not to look as much at other people work and uh, and compare it to yourself, but look at yourself and try to figure out what's what's making you happier in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important also to know that uh, just like Max is saying, when you go online and you're looking at these things and you're comparing yourself to understand that the, the things that the, the work that uh, people are putting out there is not necessarily the work that is that got them hired or the work that they're doing at their studio. Uh, I can assure you that, that if you speak to a lot of professional artists, um, you'll realize that they do very different things at the studio and uh, compared to what they post on social media. So it comes back to being focused on what will get you the job that you want as opposed to the, the stuff that other people are doing. And, and I'm not saying don't do personal work. I'm saying like just identify which one is for what and organize it in a way that allows you to differentiate. Like it's, it's a blurry line, but ultimately if you can 
have uh, that separation between what will get you hired and what is personal, that's going to make it easier for you to build a portfolio that is very relevant. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to jump. Uh, we know you guys have so many questions. So uh, we've been gathering a couple here. And mm -hmm. so we're going to jump into q and I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Max, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, because people are also wondering why our faces are so small. <laughs> well, you know, um, I don't know. Um, um, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna ask some questions and then yeah we can, yeah we let's can. let's do that and we also and have uh, portfolio five reviews. yeah five portfolios from from yesterday to finish. I think it's six or or six yeah you know yeah. I'm I'm good in art but not in math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, frequently asked questions. This is a classic. Classic. Which one do you think is this the classic uh, portfolio? Uh, How many pieces should I have on my portfolio? Uh, the best one. So best just ones? just have the best one. Honestly, like sometimes, like uh, 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 here's an example from like my life. Basically, a couple months ago, a client come to me, and he pointed uh, or she pointed to just one piece in my portfolio that I would never think to be uh, to, to bring me any work because I made that piece just uh, as a practice in terms of like trying to solve my personal kind of like design uh, problem. And then I guess somehow someone and, and I and I enjoy it and I posted it. So and I guess someone liked it and come to me. So my answer will be post only the the best thing and the best from your point of view if you like something post it because then if someone else likes it and they want you to do more of that then you will be happy to to work on you know more projects like that um and if you don't like something just get rid of that because it's you know old piece or it's it's not working or something like that and even if you're gonna have like two or three pieces and those pieces are gonna be super good, uh, it's better than having, I think, 10 or 15 pieces. Yeah. I don't know, I, it's, there are different strategies and different people will tell you different things, but that's my kind of approach to that, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. I would say, I would say it's, uh, I, I entered MPC, with uh, 15, 15 pieces, but it's hard because each one of these pieces had a universe. So we've been talking about the universe a lot or mm -hmm. like the, the world that you create. So although uh, like one piece is more like the character and then the turnaround and then, you know, like all of those are one piece. So think maybe about universes. Um, yeah, uh, even for both for video game and for film, knowing that you can take care of the entire pipeline will make you more hireable. So uh, it doesn't mean you have to do that, but mm -hmm. you know, either if you're a one, someone who's going to do reproduction or just, or design, you know, have, have the range of uh, pieces per world that you're creating per story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's going to make, like I've seen portfolios that is just one universe, one world, with everything in that world being designed and illustrated and that that's also valid. Um, so mm -hmm. it's hard to put a number to this question that is, I think the most frequently asked question ever. Yeah. Um, I, if I was to narrow down my answer, I would say, uh, 12 universes. Um, mm -hmm. and I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Um, they're asking, oh, they're saying we can no longer see us. Yeah. Can because... you hear Ah, okay. It's yeah, because, yeah. Uh, no, no, no more faces. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to see? Oh, okay. So put our faces while while we get to portfolio reviews, I guess. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I can do it right now because it's gonna be, I, I gonna waste so much time on it, like at least ten minutes or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry guys for that. So, um, next thing. Should I I diversify? between characters, environment, props, painting, 3D, or be specific? I'd say be wow. specific unless you're yeah. really good at all of them. Uh -huh. uh, if you're like just okay at something, don't don't show it. Like 
just show the things that you're really good at. And again, I'm not saying you can't, you definitely can show all of these things if you're good at all of them. Mm -hmm. If you're only good at one, keep pushing for that one. Someone will react uh, and relate to your sensitivities. Um, yeah. Well, I think we kind of answered that question uh, in the beginning of our talk. Uh, there is like a next question about should I craft my portfolio for a specific company or should I uh, have a range of skills? So it's uh, a kind of, you know, this, the same answer. Like it depends on what you uh, w what is comfortable for you. If you are comfortable in you know, adjusting your skill sets and your style for a specific company, then good. If not, then probably it's uh, much better for you to work on whatever in, in the style that is yours. And then eventually you will get hired by the company because they would like you. Or you can also just compare. You can take a look at your pieces and compare it to the companies and see if that matches. Because like if you have really stylized, uh, you know, fantasy kind of images in your portfolio and you are trying to get job on Call of Duty or something like that, right? Then obviously there is a conflict, but uh, there are other companies who are looking for people who are good in fantasy, uh, you know, concept art. So there is always mm -hmm. some possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let, let's 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 take a look maybe on the uh, Lucia or Lucia um, mm -hmm. portfolio. Go for it. Uh, yeah, because I was looking at it for past five minutes, I guess. I think it's pretty nice. I like how even though you have different uh, stories, like uh, some of them are like modern, some about animals like this one and uh and this one but they have like a style in, within you know um and it feels like it's your style because i i can see the the pattern here in terms of how you how you design the characters and etc um so again uh, because you already have the voice i i would say try to stay true to that because it's easy to lose your voice and start to i don't want to say copy but imitate other people like trying to use other people techniques and etc so just try to stay true to your voice and and just work more and you will i i i think eventually every artist just like us we uh, and this, like you, you feel if something is not working, if something is hard for you, for, for example, like you're working on the animal's anatomy and you feel that you lacking some skills in there. So you just can spend a couple weeks or months on studying that and you get better in that. If you feel that your colors are not working, then you can start studying that. Um, so I think just focusing on like a particular task, like for example, you can say that this month I will study forest and how to paint forest in color. And you just focus on that and you do studies from photos or from real life and et cetera. And eventually you getting better. If you need feedback, you can always, you know, ask other people whom, whose work you like and they will um, definitely going to you know help you and you know and that's how you grow yeah i would say yeah focus for sure i see uh, uh things that are a bit like illustration but i'm mm -hmm. not sure if it's illustration because i feel like they could be taking to the next level of finish there's some stuff that looks like um like if you go to uh the one with it's a character design mm -hmm. yeah like that um, i think this one right no uh, yeah 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 like uh you know i see some visual development and then i hope that based on what we just talked about you can uh get these pieces to match a part of the pipeline yeah. or like to have a purpose mm -hmm. uh for the industry um and i think that's gonna 
help you immensely. Yeah, because this page could be like a pre-production, like super early, just developing some ideas for a future mm -hmm. uh, concepts. Same like with this one. But I, I think it also depends on the industry because uh, it's a bit different in games and it depends on what kind of game, right? It could be like if, for example, you're working on some kind of mobile game, for example, you can definitely do a page like that then pick an, a concept from, from this page and uh, develop it more in, in colors and sh use some shading. And then you give it to animators and, and here you go, you, you have your uh, character ready for, for a game or something. So mm -hmm. it really depends on the industry. And there is nothing wrong with you know starting in mobile games and slowly and getting paid for your work. And while you're working, you uh you know you you work on your skills and then you get into another industry yeah so. definitely yeah I, I i think uh focusing on one and don't worry it doesn't mean that that's all, all you're gonna do the rest of your life like but try to get in maybe with the style that you feel the most comfortable yeah. with uh, work on that one you'll get the job you'll have the income and then you'll have that you know extra time to focus on the next skill you know yeah. don't think that you you'll be doing the same thing over and over yeah uh, they're asking you guys constantly talk about solving problems mm -hmm. with your art can you give us examples of the problems that can be used in a portfolio piece so i guess things that happened at the studio that we like briefs that they can use as examples for them to create other pieces mm. um, can you open another portfolio while we answer this one? yeah yeah i just did oh cool uh-huh well we're looking at yeah it's uh mauricio, mauricio pampin, pampin. oh yeah. i know this guy personally he really was, yeah, yeah he's cool with me. but he was doing animation back then <laughs> yeah that's funny um anyway i so some i'm, I'm gonna think of a problem mm -hmm. well i i always talk about the laser gun i think you guys <laughs> are gonna get tired of it but you know like post-production would be like oh we have this shot and then there's a person shooting and we don't know what the laser looks like. So maybe giving options of that laser. Uh, if it's pitch, you can think of, uh, you can grab a book, a novel, and think what would happen if someone was to make a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. So grab the the most important parts of that uh, story. story and illustrate them in yeah. a pitch form, right? Broad, uh, you don't have to design everything yet. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in pre-production, you can grab uh characters from that novel and and actually go ahead and design them and tell us everything you, you know about them and remember always give us options yeah um this is a, what we go through every day maybe for it's usually not the whole pipeline for for one movie we usually get like pieces from different movies mm -hmm. um but that's usually the case we get a script and sometimes they tell us this is pitch we want to sell the project make something beautiful engaging inspiring or sometimes they tell us it's being greenlit it's going to be made but we need to design character a character b and character c so think think of those novels those stories that inspire you or if you write them yourself go ahead and do that yeah and then and then uh think of where where in the pipeline you want you want to uh come in and address those problems yeah do you want to go through this portfolio, Mauricio's? Yeah, well, um, I'm thinking. Basically, I, I, it's it's pretty good. Um, I I like it a lot. I think I think what I what I feel like that you I mean. Uh, Mauricio can add to that portfolio to make it uh, kind of like brighter. Uh, I think the, the f just focusing on um, something like more more specific, for example, in this uh, in these pieces, like uh, I can see from the process that the focus was on designing the uh, this building, right? and 
there is a beautiful you know references page and i can see how you come up with those ideas and it's all cool but then at the final image this building even though it's like it's a uh, it's it's a main focal point it just i don't i i feel like there is still more opportunity to to put more focus on on that building to make it shine in a way because right now you have so many characters on foreground for example that doing something but not nothing specific it's almost like they're just staying talking to each other etc and because of that i don't really know what to look at like is this piece about story moment or is this piece about the building and it kind of goes the same like with this page right because it looks to me that um there is some story moments happening but then uh what what is the star of this image right is it about uh a buildings or those characters doing something or it's about uh overall mood and feeling behind this shot mm -hmm. uh i i think you kind of like i mean uh, mauricio i think he kind of stayed uh, um s a bit safer than i would prefer to be honest like I will pick one direction. For example, if this shot is about the mood and the atmosphere, the like beautiful sunset, so I will push it more. I will play with colors and etc. just to make sure that this beautiful mood of this sunset on possibly on some other uh, distant planet that we never saw before to make it you know as beautiful as possible and maybe even push down some of the designs and story elements. Um, mm -hmm. But that's only like, a you know, uh, this is the, the kind of feedback that like, if you want to do that, and it's not necessarily going to make it better. It's just an opinion in a way, because it's already done. Um, mm -hmm. I, can you go to the one, uh, the sci-fi lab? Mm -hmm. This one? It's a group, let me see. Yeah, sci-fi love, right? Okay, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, one, one, something that helps us a lot because we're working on very tight deadlines is uh, if you show it, if, it's, if, if you're showing it to me, then it has to be designed, right? Like, it's very hard to just drop something uh, that's in full light and in the middle of the, of the screen and and if it's not designed you can tell so something that i noticed with this image is that you were kind of going for areas of focus i can see uh areas of interest the areas of most contrast and you have the lamp and you have the scientist and you have the very background you have like three areas but then you have this shape in the very center of the screen and it's fully shown in light and it's a normal uh, light from a dentist, you know, like that's an area that you're showing to me at the very center. And then I expect it to be designed like as, a, as something different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like, you could have hidden it. Like if you study cinematography, you'll realize how often we have something so close to the background that, you know, it's, it's blurry and you no longer know what it is or it's the dark. Um, but if it's shown, then I'm expecting to see something incredible something designed there and that's why you don't need to spend time in the entire image and this is again as a concept artist okay Be because of time uh you want to spend time in those focused areas and those areas have to be beautiful and, and those areas are your places to drop the story that's uh the first um area where you need to work and then the rest you can blur you can paint that's where you see the brush strokes and where people who are really good at this uh, can hide things in a beautiful stroke and then they no longer show you what is happening but it suggests something so i would say try to you can you can render less but render more uh surgically right mm -hmm. yeah definitely okay um but cool stuff mauricio uh, yeah it's good to hear from you yeah Okay, uh, do you want to 
look for the next one. I'm going to uh -huh. read another question. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of touching on what, what I was saying. How do you balance showing ideas and rendering in a portfolio? Would you rather see less rendered things, but more ideas or more rendered things with a few solid ideas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely idea is the thing that is most important. And then after that, you can render it. And if you're just rendering for the sake of rendering, then it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it mm -hmm. makes sense in terms of trying to show that you uh, know the technique and you know how to render. But if it's not working for the bigger you know, purpose, then uh, there is no really point to do that. Mm -hmm. And again, for students, I think it is it's hard balance because um, as a student you part of your time you're working on your skills right and uh and working on your skills is develop developing a technique and then you end up having a lot of uh pieces that were technique oriented and and you want to present them because you don't have anything else and that's fine but uh i think it's it's important to understand that this piece is about technical skills and this one is about uh, actual, you know, problem solving. Yeah, definitely. I, I want to tell you a story uh, from from work. Uh, quite often when we were asked to do something, we prefer to send sketches because it's faster and we cover a wider range. So we may send 10, 20, 30 sketches or unfinished pieces but we send one or two very good rendered, uh, very finalized images so that the client realizes like, oh, so I can pick from this range and I know that this artist can finalize it, right? So when you work on your portfolio, uh, think, think the same way, like show us your ideas, make sure they're clear, even if they're pencil or rough, like, you know, anatomy and perspective have to be okay, they have to be good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, can, they don't have to be fully rendered as long as in another part of your portfolio, you can show me that if I needed to, you could push it uh, further in that direction. So I would say that you could have a lot of ideas, even if they're not fully finished, as long as they're correct uh, in terms of uh, values and, yeah. and all, all the basics. Uh, and then you can have a fewer that are fully finished so that we can see Oh, this person can take it to the next level if we if we need to take it there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you wanna go the, through this portfolio? Yeah, it, it's incredible. It's beautiful. I like it. Uh, it's kind of like in this uh, Sid meets kind of you know world in terms of it's beautifully rendered. There is a style in there, and at the same time, it's it has some beautiful designs. Um, what I would say is that. I, again, just in order to push you farther, right? I would say m try to maybe push your design even more. For example, like in this piece, I, I, it's beautiful. I, I like it. I like I, I can print it, put it, you know, on a wall and it's it's incredible. And there is a story moment in here uh, that I can read. And it's again, it's awesome. Um, but I think, for example, if you will add a little bit of uh, depth into design, uh, for example, there is a character right in the middle with some kind of pattern on it. And it hints on some kind of language that I can recognize. Uh, but it's not enough for me to understand who is that person. Uh, like, is he just a random person or he's uh, an important character in this universe right because for example if you will go and search for references online and you will try to look for uh, i don't know like a uh, queen uh, i mean the, like kings and stuff like that you will see that they have some specific patterns that immediately tells you that they are important you know persons in this uh, in this image or something like that. You can also include stuff like uh, indications of uh, culture. 
because right now again uh, i don't really understand if that's a western culture or uh, eastern or even more specific like if it's some french based or english based or american based or something like that or egypt based uh, so adding those small details uh, kind of like references in your image that will help me to uh, read this image properly to understand what's going on will add depth to your uh, to your design mm -hmm. and uh, and it's happening all over the place like for example in this first piece you have this car but I don't really know like for me I would enjoy if I will recognize this car as being for example, BMW of the future, right? I don't mean that you need to put the BMW logo on that, but maybe there is something, uh, some kind of pattern that BMW has that you can include in this car so people will recognize it, you know? Yeah, it's like suggesting, like, was is this world, uh, like, is this vehicle made by NASA or is this vehicle made by a private company or is this vehicle and I, I mean to me it seems like a you know as you were saying max like a bmw or something but just the in you can just show that it's branded for example yeah like that's all we need to know like oh it's branded and that's that you know yeah. so yeah just like that tiny level and, um, and basically mm -hmm. what i was saying is adding more story into your image because right now it's just a car right if you're going to make BMW out of it, it's going to be the car. It's going to be BMW of the future. And maybe you can put even more story. Maybe you can put some dirt on it or some, I don't know, something and, tells, and tell more story. So mm -hmm. thinking about that, I think, is important. And then mm -hmm. your piece is going to be more than just a concept art. It's going to be, uh, you know, um, something bigger, something more interesting. But yeah. uh, overall, this is a word from Estevao, Estevao Chromic. Yes. Chromic. Yeah. And uh, no, I, it's it's beautiful. Honestly, I, I, you have the skills. You could. I'm guessing you're already working uh, in the industry. And one thing that I really like from this portfolio that I think it's worth noting is how focused it is. Like I don't see a lot of pre-production uh, happening. I don't see a lot of post-production happening. This person, uh, uh, Estevao, seems to be focusing on pitch on like. The early stages where he's setting up the mood he's uh he even has some story beats it all mm -hmm. seems to be from very early on and and the fact that he has focus has allowed him to you know really flourish and and, and be excellent at, at this uh, state so i think this is a very good example of what i would consider a uh, peach pre-production uh, sorry peach uh illustration mm -hmm. uh these are all story beats and uh and you know like He's not necessarily solving all the design questions, but he yeah. gives you a taste mm -hmm. of where the language goes. Yeah. And that's really important. Yeah. Uh, but overall, very, very beautiful work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We yeah. may need to hire you at some point. <laughs> it's true. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Rob Brunette, Toronto. Do we have any more questions or something? Yes. Like that? Um, Uh, how can we stand out with so many amazing artists? Like it feels like every person I find on our station is just amazing, and every person in this portfolio review is too. Um, yeah, that's tough. But I would say, uh, do, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I mean, my answer is simple. You just have to stay, as I said, stay true to yourself, because if you will try to imitate or if you will look at some other people and you will think like oh this person is awesome and you know like i i want to be like that then uh you will never be i mean you can be as good as that person but that person already did it anyway you know so and if you instead get inspired but then you look back at yourself and you think like okay but here's what here's this this is what i'm gonna do right like because this is my idea and i'm gonna make it then uh then you're gonna stand out because uh naturally you are a unique person because like all of us have unique 
stories, you know, history. We we all were born in different cities and we experienced different, you know, emotions and stuff like that. So using that as an advantage will will help a lot. Um, so I yeah uh, yeah that's that's my answer. yeah I think you'll stand out when when you're true to yourself and and again it's very often that we see uh, even throughout these portfolios that you are trying to do what the company is already doing but this is something very important that I, I think I haven't mentioned uh, when we like projects take between three to five years to develop so just think that by the time you see the concept art for a movie it's already been probably five years since the movie uh, started so if you if at that point you start to create work that looks like that movie you're seven years behind uh, yeah. behind so you're never going to catch up you're never going to catch up looking at looking concept back, art and, yeah. and, and looking back at the things that have been made so i think it's a way in a way you kind of have to trust me in like be true to yourself. What are your experiences? Where are you from? Uh, and then people will react to that more than to things that already exist. Uh, you won't be able to catch up, honestly. Uh, a lot of the pitch work that we do happens so early in the game. Uh, and then, yeah, by the time we get to look at it and, and you look at the company and you see the movie and you're doing work, a new style has already happened. They have hired already a new set of people who have a unique uh, view of the world and they're already working on a new style. So, you know, it's going to be another seven years till you get to see uh, what that is. Yeah. So just be true to yourself. You, it's going to be very hard to catch up if you're always chasing. Yeah. And I mean, um, honestly, uh, what we're saying is, is just uh, kind of like a, in a in a bigger scale of things right because obviously if you see s someone's doing something awesome using blender and you don't know blender it doesn't mean that you have to stay true to yourself and never learn blender right i, I mean obviously if you need that skill you can go and buy gum rods and uh learn it and you know and and use it in your work but what i'm trying to say what's important is is to understand what you're doing. Like if you trying to figure out the technique that other artists is using, that's one thing. But if you're just trying to imitate something because you like it, then, and again, even in that case, like if you like it, like if you really like it, then you're gonna make it, it your thing. You're not gonna copy anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's like there is uh, there is a balance between looking, getting ex inspired, talking to other artists, getting their experience and use that experience. And at the same time, filter it through your mind and getting uh, and as an outcome, getting your work, you know, mm -hmm. um, or at least try to do that. You know, if you try, you will definitely do that yeah um uh, can you stay in that page with the the new world the lost yeah. world uh-huh I, I think that for this this piece it's interesting because i see the skills you know i can see us having to design a creature at the studio and ship it off but instead of seeing uh your process i think i would have liked to see because again at the studio we don't care about the process of anyone and how you achieve the images yeah uh, we would have i would have liked to see options like how how many options do you go through first to arrive at this one mm -hmm. so i guess a page where you have the sketches that you would show just inside the studio right like a lot of uh, the little silhouettes that sometimes people do the tiny sketches pencil sketches you can show a little bit of that and that's like the internal review mm -hmm. and then the first set that we would send to the client so that would be like um you know three very different options of this particular creature and then the final render where you're putting it in the environment mm -hmm. so uh, i think that's more important than process in a professional portfolio i know this is maybe just to share uh, yeah. with art station and it's valid as well just something to keep in mind but you know like i went through the whole portfolio i mean not whole but like most pieces and i will say that 
the skill is there like like this mm -hmm. piece is you know is beautiful just as you said like if if he will make a couple more options like different character uh of the character that that i mean of this creature is gonna be uh, it's gonna be more than enough same like with this guy like it's it's beautiful it's there uh and there's like more explanatory kind of like sketches like explaining how the wings are working and what is the overall design etc so yeah i mean it's all there i at this point i wouldn't really worry about spending more time on technique like trying to learn more tools and stuff like that i will use all the tools that you already have all the skills and create couple killer pieces yeah i think it's yeah. a really good point yeah. definitely uh organized by by worlds again universes mm -hmm. like all the dragon hunters maybe you can put them all together because yeah. then it makes me uh, yeah it makes me think that you're thinking of the bigger picture yeah but definitely yeah i think you do have the skills yeah um i'm gonna give you another question while you open the next portfolio okay um Uh, question is there a way okay jojo brown is there a way you can do everything in the art industry like you can be a storyboard artist for tv and film and visual development artist and a concept artist at the same time yeah i mean i think you can if you like 300 years old and uh you have uh, if you're amazing at everything yeah if yes. you're a <laughs> genius at everything and you've been doing that forever or something like that yeah. but it, uh, yeah i mean the reality is actually no because uh, uh because there is no time to learn everything that's what i think i mean it's yeah. it makes sense to focus more on one thing and be good at that instead of trying i mean there is nothing wrong with trying everything but then uh i think you you still want to be and yeah. I, and i think you naturally will get better at something uh, than another one you know yeah yeah i would say uh go back to the beginning of the presentation focus 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 yeah, yeah. is it possible definitely i'm sure there's people that do it but if you're especially if you're starting out it's going to be easier for you to jump in uh into a role um an entry level job in the studio, you'll meet people that are seniors and art directors, and they'll help you to hone your skills for those other things that you want to explore. Again, this is not like you become a concept artist and you stay a concept artist. There's always room to grow. And, but once you're in the industry, you'll meet the people that will teach you those skills and will help you to explore other avenues. But focus, I would say, is the main, the main uh, idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're looking at another... Uh, yeah, it is Steve Cole. Steve Cole. Yeah. Cool. Um, it's I also like a pitch, no? Seems. Yeah, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like that. True. Um, I mean, it could be like, for example, that piece in particular about pilots. It, it it's explanatory of the uh, cockpit design, like how those characters can fit in there and uh, how you can shoot that scene in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, mm, it's good, but uh, I think you can push it a little bit more in terms of light because I can see how in 3D scene uh, it's working because of it's much brighter. But once you start to render and once you start to make it darker, it's hard to, you know, it loses some of the details and uh, three-dimensionality on the image. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely uh, one thing that I will work on. Yeah, I would say that I love your sense of cinematography, your sense of composition and, and this type of lighting is cool. I just find that the if we're talking about pitch, if we're talking that your piece is going to inspire the rest of the pipeline or is going to be used at the beginning of the process, the moments of the story that you've chosen are not necessarily key moments of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, yeah, the skills are there. The image is pretty. It's like, it's cool. But 
is that really the most important part of the movie that would be like, you know, like this is going to inspire the rest. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, I'd say that for a lot of them, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's pre-production, then I think too many things are hidden mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in darkness. Uh, so, so I would say maybe try to focus or try to find uh, story beats that are more meaty that have yeah. uh, you know that tell us more about their their large uh the large uh scale of the universe yeah, th yeah these are all valid by the way like this could be part of your portfolio like part of it because quite often uh it's needed you know to describe the lighting the mood the camera like like these things are useful i, I think you should definitely keep them but give us a couple more that are more like uh um, yeah, story driven as yeah. opposed to uh, more general moments. Like, for example, this piece is beautiful story moment, like something is happening, but it feels like it will benefit more if you will push it a little bit more. Like, it looks like they're working on some kind of robot now when I'm uh, exploring it, you know, closely. But if you can play a little bit more with the design of that uh body or the robot that those uh guys working on it will it will be so much more interesting maybe there is like a hologram or something unique about this you know moment that that will make it uh kind of like sing you know because right now it's just it looks to me almost like a regular surgery scene except for they're working on something robotic but we don't really know what it is and yeah it's it's good that you suggesting something but i think like if you will if you will give me more candy i will you know like it more because right now mm. um, i don't have enough like i'm please please give max more candy <laughs> <laughs> yes well true because you yes. know like a lot of times like for example let's go to some other pieces like like this one again like there's something's going on those soldiers are going to that cave but i need to like even if you will just put two small bright dots in the cave like there is uh, some kind of creature or something like that i will be like oh you know like now i have this candy and i can you know I, my imagination starts working but right now I don't have it. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess there is a cave and they are going there, you know. Um, so gi giving or suggesting that there is more will make your work better. And mm -hmm. uh, that's a small fix, you know, like because like the body of work is there, like 90 percent is there. Uh, it's just the rest 10 percent, which you usually spend 90 percent of the time on those 10 percent because in order to make it work, in order to make that candy the best candy, you know, like you need to think <laughs> a lot. You need to experiment a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to read another question while we open another portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, how do you suggest any, uh, do you have any approach to get the attention of ILM, MPC, or like the studios during this COVID time? Uh, who do you need to search and how can you show your portfolios when you are working remotely? Um, I, I, I mentioned this before, but I got my, my current job uh, through LinkedIn. Like I had a portfolio put together and I would say that a lot of it has to do with approaching people at the right time. So it's not always up to you, you know, like you may be, uh, you, know, you may have the skill, you, you may have the portfolio, and it just means that in the background, they're working on a project that doesn't necessarily need your style. And that's okay. Like that shouldn't be discouraging for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say just um, reach out uh, on LinkedIn. You can look for recruiters. Like you can actually type in recruiter of certain company and like, you know, you can start a conversation, uh, maybe asking like, is there anything you need? Um, it's also something that I find very refreshing when people approach us is when they tell us what they've been up to. So it's like, hey, here's my portfolio and this is what I've been doing lately. This is what I'm interested in. Um, but uh, honestly, like I would, I would just go online, look for these people, these names. Uh, a lot of times people uh, look for other concept artists who 
we are not hiring necessarily, you know, like I may receive a portfolio and I may pass it to my art director, my art director may like it and he may pass it to the recruiter and, you know, like, but maybe you can aim for the recruiter, aim for the art directors uh, as opposed to other people in your position. Um, I mean, everything is valid. I don't think there's like a clear answer, yeah. but I think, uh, I think it's just reaching out to as many people as possible, doing a little bit of research per company. And uh, I can assure you, you, you'll, if your portfolio is good, people notice and it gets to the point where they start looking for you as opposed to you looking for them. Yeah. So just, I yeah. think it's also just important to, uh, in order to, for people to look for you, even if you have a good portfolio, you have to post it. So basically I would say stay active. Uh, and I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, that's the part of the, of the industry because if you just sit somewhere in a corner and you draw or paint and you never show it or publish it anywhere then people won't know that you exist right so if you spend a little bit extra time on posting your stuff on making it look professional and uh, you know and talking to other people then eventually people will know that you are there and they will contact you you know like for for work or something like that mm -hmm. so yeah i mean there is no uh one way of approaching it. and especially as you just said it's it's most of the time it's not up to you if you're gonna get a job or not it's more about if you are at the right time in the right place mm -hmm. uh, but you have to be there and in order to be there you have to go somewhere you know like you have to post you have to talk to people you have to ask even as farid just said like even in case when you are not uh when companies are not actively looking for concept artists you can stay in touch with them and you know and hopefully it will help you to to get a job yeah don't don't wait i would say also don't wait till you are looking for the job or don't wait till your portfolio is ready start reaching out to other artists that are already working yeah. to like, and just start a conversation. Like I can assure you, it's very frustrating when you're, you feel you're ready, you're re ready to apply. And then you also need to find the connections and yeah. try to you can start with that today. Start reaching out as you continue developing your portfolio. And that's going to be very helpful because when you are ready, then the avenue, the avenue will be opened. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at whose portfolio? Uh, that's uh, Lena. Lena. Uh, yeah, cool. so it's pretty interesting. It's like illustrative, but at the same time, some of the characters, like the latest one, like this one, looks to me like they are kind of like concept arty because it's not just a bird; it's some kind of uh, crazy bird, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, she's pushing it toward that kind of like you know expand the boundaries you know of the uh, just making studies or making uh, a painting of a bird or something like that mm -hmm. um, there is definitely a room to explore more of the environments this one is pretty nice there is some story in it mm. yeah I would say I would say again focus yeah. uh, because a lot of your pieces don't necessarily tell me what you were solving. And I, I, may, I mean, the, the, the idea of problem solving is gonna come back over and over. It's like, where in the pipeline are you and what were you solving for that part of the pipeline? Yeah. Uh, and again, that's if you wanna go into visual development, because I also see a lot of illustrations and- Yeah, like this one is cl clearly beautiful il illustration. For, I love for this a one, or something. The, yeah. the one with the- creatures and uh -huh. it's so beautiful yeah and it's unique like you know in terms of style it's something i wouldn't necessarily see a lot you know so yeah it's, it's yeah, pretty it's cool refreshing um I, yeah yeah go on oh no just like uh, this to me feels very much like a universe mm -hmm. and i appreciate that because it's like we get to see what happens in this world uh and it allows us to think 
it's a, it allows us to see how you think, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's very important. This is a, to me, a very strong portfolio piece. Yeah. Uh, I would say I can see you're exploring a lot, lot of avenues, a lot of techniques, uh, but don't, don't uh, stop doing this. Uh, even if you want to continue exploring, I would say this is one of your strongest. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, words. that's incredible. Like I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling and it's more and more and more and it's interesting. You know, it's cool. Yeah. I think if you embrace it and continue presenting this type of work, someone will notice when the project is being developed and, and they, they'll reach out to you and be like, Hey, uh, uh, we need this type of, uh, yeah. style for our movie. Yeah. Um, if anything, because this seems like very zoological, uh, very, uh, very much creature oriented, uh, just make sure that I, I see some of your anatomy uh, could be improved. And I'm just saying this in this particular case, because you seem to be digging into the anatomy like a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you show me, then I'm expecting to see, uh, you know, like the, the yeah. accu accuracy. Like if, you, if you're gonna zoom in, mm -hmm. then it's because you're showing me how accurate you are. If you wanna stay zoomed out, uh, you can hide certain things. So I think that goes for, for everyone. Like, mm -hmm. Um, choose when you do when if you zoom in is because you're an expert at that thing you're zooming in yeah. and if you don't then then it's okay um, but overall I think this is, this is very beautiful very strong piece yeah um, I honestly I really like it like mm -hmm. look at this one that's beautiful um, yeah I mean I would honestly suggest to continue doing that and yeah. maybe like if you if you want to push it into digital world i would recommend maybe to um, scan the the page like this one and try to do some digital on top but it looks good as it is and it seems like you know it, if you work on it a little bit more not this one in particular but uh, in general, right? If you take a piece and you will try to make it uh, a, a beautiful il illustration for a magazine or a book, it could work, uh, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, so, I see that uh, there are these sections, right? Like creature design, character mm -hmm. design, environment. I would say that environment, uh, you, it seems like you're going in a different direction in terms of style and technique. And I would suggest like, hey, go back to what you're really good at right now. Maybe um, pursue environment from this approach that where you're very comfortable. Um, and then the same for character. I, I feel like when you switch, when you switch the category, uh, we no longer see your style. We mm -hmm. see you're trying to emulate maybe uh, other things and I would say your style could be used to explore everything, creature, mm -hmm. character, and environment. Mm -hmm. You don't need to move to a different one. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, we have, I think that was it for portfolios? Yes, it is. Okay, it is. Is, do you wanna, so you said that you're gonna put our faces there just to read the four last questions we have? Oh yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay, oh. four last yeah. questions. Faces are there. Faces are there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, if you have two different styles, should you separate those styles in your portfolio? Uh, like dedicate pages to group pieces of the same style. I don't know. It depends. Like if it's, I think it's, I, I would imagine if it's like, if, if you're, if you are targeting the book illustrations, then I guess it makes sense. If you are targeting more of the concept art and then i think it's more important to group the work in uh in project by project base so because when you go into project and you see the different explorations for different parts of the project it's uh it doesn't matter what style you use uh it, it actually can you know give you an advantage because you can say like okay for this spe specific task i use this style to approach it because I think it's, you know, working better. And then for something else, I use a different style because it works for that kind of task better. Uh, 
but in portfolio, I think project by project for concept art is much more definitely uh, successful. Yeah, I, ca I, I keep going to universe by universe, uh, yeah. project by project. Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, techniques yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you'll be asked to switch. If you're in a studio, you'll be asked to not switch completely, but like shape your style to the mm -hmm. project. So yeah. it's fine to have multiple. And it's also, uh, I think, depends on the studio, to be honest. Because like, if it's a different studio, if it's a game studio, it, it could be completely different. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, three more questions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, superhero, that's a good name. <laughs> I was asking, what was a technique mistake you did so long? And and what was the workaround? So what was the technique mistake you did? Okay, I, I have an how answer. How did you fix it? I have a definite answer. Mm -hmm. Rendering. So like <laughs> rendering stuff over and over, it's like the biggest mistake. It's, it's hard to stop rendering because it's so, uh, you know, comfortable because mm -hmm. you are not thinking you're just like oh i'm just gonna you know like put photos or put textures i'm gonna render it and you can spend weeks doing that but if your idea and story behind your pieces is, is not good or if your compositional if your composition is not you know the best and etc it doesn't matter how much you're gonna render it it's still gonna be not good so mm -hmm. Personally, yeah. yeah, rendering too I, much. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Starting the starting my piece without thinking of the story, just because like, oh, I'm thinking of something cool. I'm going to spend months in that piece because I didn't solve the very first thing, which was to pick my story, pick my brief, uh, or, you know, like something that guides the entire piece. And those are the worst. Like, then you're just like coming up with stories as you're rendering. Yeah. And it's like jumpy. So like try to stick to to a pipeline, like structure it, broad uh, shapes. Then if you want to design, you can design in those areas of interest, the areas mm -hmm. of most contrast. And, uh, and and then you can finish with those details in those areas of contrast. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the biggest mistake for most of us artists is like getting too excited about the wrinkles. Yeah. The, yeah. Next to the eye. Yeah. Let's call it wrinkles, not rendering. The, wrink <laughs> the wrinkles. Um, <laughs> that's your biggest mistake. Wrinkles. <laughs> uh, well, it says uh, from Neva Duncan. It says, which courses would you would a student need to cover to be a pre-production artist? Oh, a lot. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't I, say there's one course. I yeah. think, or like a number of. I think it all comes back to. Uh, fundamentals and i think yeah. you're going to hear this over and over and over if you if your fundamentals are uh there then you can move through through the industry and yeah. through industries because you just you'll just need to learn basically yeah. styles or rendering uh techniques uh but your design sensitivity or storytelling yeah. sensitivity is always going to be there yeah and, uh, well because yeah. like I I I always think about fundamentals as uh, grammar, you know, in, in language. So if you don't know that, it's gonna be tough for you to to go beyond that to write a poem or something like that. So you need to know perspective. You need to know at least some basics of anatomy. You need to know some color theory, compositional, you know, all that stuff. And and it's it's not a big list, right? I. Call, I named like five pieces, I think, and it's already covering most of that, you know, because if you know perspective, if you know some art history, if you know some architecture and how light is working and some composition, you can do environments. If you know figure drawing, you can add characters to that. If you, yeah, and if you added characters, you have story moments in, in that environment. Mm -hmm. If you add some uh, functional design, so you need to learn how, you know, spaceships working and stuff like that, so you can design them, then you can add that to your work. And it's only like six, seven, you know, items that you have to learn. Mm -hmm. And all of them, I mean, each of them are probably going to take you sometimes. Like, for example, figure drawing, you need to spend like at least half a year or something like that if you never did it before perspective is the same because it's like a lot of stuff in there uh and and that's why there are universities because they gives you that fundamentals and you if you try and 
uh, here's my opinion, right? If you're trying to segue around it, you are not gonna, um, eventually you will learn it, but you, because I don't see how you can not, you know, know, uh, for example, perspective uh, and make a good environments. Because like, even if you use 3D programs, you still need to know what kind of lens to use. And if you need to pick the lens, you need to know how perspective is working. And mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, not, you know, it's it's basic stuff, but you need to know all that. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, also know that you're going to learn a lot of work at work. Uh, yeah. When I came into MPC, they hired me because, you know, I they saw my final images or whatever. But they, they hired me because of my, the way I felt, basically. And what my art director told me was like, you know, we can teach you how to do things faster. We can teach you, you know, those techniques off the job. But, you know, we're ultimately hiring people for their perspective on, on, on life, basically, on the yeah. world, the way they see things. So um, focus on the fundamentals. And then you, you learn a lot at work. Just, uh, again, narrow down your options. Uh, be very good at, at, at what you do uh, yeah. right now, yeah. um, what, at what you love. You know? uh, how do you deal with copyright issues? Uh, what, uh, they want us to talk a little bit about photo bashing, photo bashing, mm -hmm. copyright issues when you photo bash. Um, what is photo bash first, real quick? Well, photo bashing is when you use photos and you, you know, combine them and you create an image. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if someone made a beautiful photo of beautiful sunset with some, I don't know, some pieces of nature in there and you only added birds, then you didn't do anything because you use a, someone else's image and you added birds to that. But if you use um, a, a fraction of that photo, for example, if you like the cloud and, and technically the guy who made a photo, he didn't make a cloud, he made a photo of it. Uh, so you kind of can use it, but it's a thin line because someone did that work, you know, and if it's in public uh, access, like in, on Google, so I guess there is no problem, you can use that. But it's also like if you, I, I would say the my rule is this one, like if I feel that I get inspired by someone, I will make other people know that, yeah, I get inspired by this work and that's why I'm doing that. If I feel like I'm using someone else's, you know, piece in my work, I will credit it. So basically, if you credit it, you are letting other people know that you are not trying to hide that you use it. You actually saying that, yes, I use it, but that's the person who did it. And if that person is OK with that, with you using it, then everyone's happy. Uh, so I would say if you are not trying to pretend that a piece that you use is your, then it's fine. If you use it for your bigger, whatever task, then I guess it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I just remember the reason why we use photos is for speed. Yeah. Uh, just be, I, if, if we had the time, each, if instead of three days to five days per piece, we had to do something in a month people wouldn't do photo bashing, you know, it's all a matter of speed. But I would say we try to push it to the point where things are unrecognizable. And uh, a lot of the concept art that you don't see or you will ever get to see uh, sometimes has to do with the fact that it's using um, photos that are still recognizable that were used just to communicate an idea. Hey, we're thinking of this uh, creature. Uh, does it look like this? Does it look like that? And then it's just a way to compare like the direction of a project and yeah. it's not meant to be the final design or, or something like that. So I would, I would treat it just like a photograph. I would treat it as if it was a piece of work from someone mm -hmm. because it is, yeah. um, if you're going to use it, it's again for inspiration for, cause you're going to paint on top of it completely. And I cannot tell you how many times I use photos to construct quickly a composition. And then by the end, you don't see those photos, but it, they helped me to say, cloud here, sky here, uh, mountain here. So instead of me drawing it, 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 they helped me to create like the framework and then I just paint on top and that's yeah. it. You no longer see them. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, it's a, it's a tough topic, but I, uh, again, like if you, if you are not trying to hide anything, if you stay true 
with your audience, the people who are gonna you know look at your work, then you know I don't I don't see any problems in there. Yeah. Uh, they're asking where they can find our work uh, to follow and stuff. Uh, uh, personally, I I cannot post anything from work. I would say that the stuff <laughs> that I have online is like not even one person. I, yeah. I, I, I post less than 1% of what we do at the studio. Yeah. And uh, hopefully with time, these images get released. Yeah. Uh, but it's probably going to take a while. In the Never. meantime, whenever, <laughs> yeah, whenever I have time, I do a little personal piece or something. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, uh, same, same with me, right? Like for the past two years or even three years, I cannot post anything. So mm -hmm. I'm only posting like some small personal project that I was able to, you know, to finish at home at evening. But the the big chunk that the most of the stuff is just you know uh, never. Yeah. Hopefully, in, in seven years, Max. You or, think so? Is, like the, that is, point there, is, is there a law or something like that that after seven years you <laughs> you can use it? <laughs> no, no, but you know, it tends yeah. to be like that. But yeah. uh, anyway, we can post our uh, Instagram handle maybe in the comments. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, or... I, I think there should be links to our Instagrams there, but yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, well, I think I think we've covered everything we wanted to cover. Yes. Uh, yep. We just really want to thank everyone who joined us today. Yep. I, I'm sure a lot of you are tired and and you're like uh, going through Lightbox and seeing, you know, amazing work and like information and people contradicting themselves, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to hang out with us and, and listen to what we have to say. Please remember that this is so, just our opinion yeah. and you can pretty much discard everything we're saying if you want yeah. that's also valid yeah. uh, because art is something very flexible uh, yeah. very uh, it comes from the gut i guess yeah. so so uh, make sure you're enjoying yourself make sure that everything you do is for for the love of yourself of your creativity yeah. or, uh, push if you're happy your images are going to yeah uh, show that you are in a good state of mind and, and being relaxed and and with an open mind open heart yeah. as cheesy as this may sound <laughs> your art will reflect that even if you create a monster yeah it, it will reflect that you are content and and i hope that you manage to I, first do that I, the art I, will come later i like how you have a surfboard on background it's beautiful it's like yeah, enjoy, your <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your life enjoy <laughs> <laughs> on that note I'm yeah <laughs> yeah uh, thank you guys for joining and uh yeah it was awesome to you know to to see your questions to go through your portfolios and uh i hope you you know i hope it was useful whatever we said during these two hours today yeah stay in touch please uh reach yeah. out uh we're we're always hiring that's something interesting at, at npc at technicolor uh, we're always looking for freelancers. The avenue to jump into a lot of these studios is uh, you first start like a free as a freelancer and they hire you a bit more and more and more and more till the point that there's an open position for a for a full time and then they may bring you in. So uh, it's always good to start maybe freelancing to a, uh, for a couple of projects yeah. and things. So just reach out, keep sending your work. At some point, I, I assure you, uh, one of them will land and then your career starts uh, yeah. as a snowball. Yeah. Uh, so stay in touch please it's, it's great to see uh, all these portfolios it's very inspiring yeah yeah okay see I'm you good. guys next time and uh have a great uh, day thank you lightbox yep. also and Bobby oh Chu yeah for organizing <laughs> yes uh, yes uh, and everyone who helped us uh, with yeah. this production yeah thank you all a right. lot uh-huh uh bye everyone bye bye